Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Financially Free Author Show. Uh oh, I hope there's not an echo of me through your computer. This could be very interesting. <laughs> Welcome, Howard Brown. Howard has such an interesting story. And especially, you know, we got to talking and we talked about so many things that I didn't even get to find out how you sold so many copies of your book, which is extremely impressive. Most people sell like 200 copies max. So mm -hmm. I am so excited to hear that story. Why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. Carolyn, thank you for having me on MLK Day. It's a it's a great day for gratitude and freedom and, and everything that uh, Martin Luther King stood for. So to be able to come on your show today is just very special and for, for me and hopefully for your audience and listeners. I'm, I'm Howard Brown. I'm known as the Shining Brightly Guy. Um, I am a Silicon Valley entrepreneur. I am um, um, I work in the community and interfaith. I work in the cancer world because, yes, I am a two-time stage four uh, cancer patient, survivor, and advocate, but I am so much more because I am a husband, dad, and son, and brother, and all that good stuff, too. <laughs> what made you decide to write a book? Well, Carolyn, here's the, here's the great mystery. I didn't write my book. I spoke my book. Uh -huh. You have to know what you're good at, right? And I am not a great writer. Grammar and punctuation are uh, optional. Whoops, I shouldn't say that as a, to a literary audience. But <laughs> I, I, um, my publisher, who's a dear friend, David Crum, Front Edge Publishing, readthespirit.com, he said, let's write a legacy because you may not be living very long. And I said, oh, my God, I'm, I'm more scared of that than chemotherapy. I, I, I'm daunted by that. Um, and I'm really not. Chemo sucks. It's, it's horrible. But I ended up, um, he said, let's write a legacy short book for you. Leave it for your family. And I said, I, I don't think so. It's not even on my bucket list. He said, go home and sleep on it. But before we finished our coffee, he wrote on a napkin, 10 chapter headings, possible titles. So I called him back a few days later. First of all, my wife got a big kick out of it. Lisa, I said, David wants me to write a legacy book, um, you know, before, if anything happens bad, because things were bad at that time, very dark. And I was metastatic and uh, things had spread to my liver, my stomach lining and my bowel. And they didn't know if they could help me. And only God knows your number. But I, I was really hoping it wasn't coming that soon. I wanted to see my daughter graduate high school. So I call him back and I said, David, I have one condition to write a book with you. And he said, only one. Most people have like dozens. <laughs> I said, if you will record me on Zoom. Let me walk back my entire life and invite the most important influential people uh, from mentors, friends, uh, doctors, uh, camp counselors, colleagues, um, anyone in the, in the, in the, in the, you know, that I felt would be really important to add value to the story. And uh, he said, we've never done that before. I have to call you back. <laughs> That's okay. such a cool idea. I love so we, that. We, so, so remember, we're going October of, of 19, going from cancer to COVID, right? So we're all getting into the Zoom generation really fast in the next six months, whether we liked it or not. We're all working from home. Our kids are at home, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's the world, right? So uh, again, it relates to the cancer world because we're wearing masks, we're being cautious, and we are, can't do what we want to do. Uh, we're living a restricted, controlled life. Mm. So I ended up um, starting to record then around October 19, uh, 2019. And we recorded and didn't miss a Wednesday recording for probably uh, two years. And I invited people and we told stories. We laughed, we cried, we argued. Uh, because some of this stuff was from childhood and we just didn't remember the facts. I mean, it was just like, uh, this happened. No, I don't see it that way. Everybody remembers well, it differently, for oh, sure. Yeah, so, you know, we're, 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 we're at a holiday uh, dinner with the family, probably uh, Passover in the Jewish world. And we're thinking, did, did, whose brisket did we eat? Which Bubby, you know, grandma's brisket did we eat? And did it taste like this? What was the dessert? We disagreed. So um, the fun thing of these Zooms, yeah, important stuff, right? The, 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 the cool thing about the Zooms is that 
except for the chapters where my great grandmother, Bubby Bertha from Lithuania came to this country, it was passed away. And my grandfather, Leo, who fought in World War II, who passed away. These chapters don't read like the author speaking right at the reader. I'm emceeing these chapters. The chapter, it's very different read and it reads fast. And people like page turners, right? They want to want to keep going. They don't want anything that really bogs you down. But these stories tell lessons. They tell about family memory. They tell about tradition. They talk, teach lessons about mentorship, leadership, entrepreneurship, and yes, cancer, and the ability to um, accept help, be able to get back up when you've really been knocked down to your core, which we all have in our lives in different ways. So that was really the 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 the, the difference in the book, and it's um, it also leaves you, it takes you down low. And it brings you back up to inspiration because nobody, we can watch enough TV news every night to be left down and bummed out and depressed. So this leaves you with inspiration and it gives you homework. You are challenged at the end of each chapter to take a call to action. Now that's whether you do or not. That's great. But the offer is there. And the book is called Shining Brightly. So we're already sure that it's going to leave us inspired and motivated yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's blocked because of the, the view, but there it is. <laughs> it is shining brightly in the lights indeed. So actually the cover, which is really intriguing, and I developed it with a world-renowned artist collaboratively. It's my name with the actual uh, shining brightly title, Lighting Up a Dove. And mm -hmm. a dove stands for peace, you know, love and hope. and that, And it's surrounded by a light bulb to illuminate and carry that message for yourself, for others, and your communities around the world. You are so passionate about this book. When was it actually published? It published on September 27th of 2022. So literally, literally about 115 days ago. Wow. So that's pretty recently. And you told me that you sold over 1,200 copies in 90 days. I did. How and more to come. And more to so, come. All right. So I've got I've got a couple secrets to share, Carolyn, and I want you to chime in and we can dive in a little deeper on them, okay? Because let me just tell you, it does not happen overnight. The little secret number one, right? <laughs> Once you publish a book, you are at the starting line. You are <laughs> not at the finish line, even though it took 901 steps in three years to publish the book. You're at the beginning. You do not pass go. You do not collect $200. You are at the beginning of the Monopoly game. So <laughs> that, that is secret number one. Now, the other thing is, is that you have to build a brand. Okay? So for people watching live and watching the rec re record, I am your shining brightly guy. <laughs> I am known as the shining brightly guy. I'm also known as the cancer whisperer. I have known, I'm known as the guy who plays basketball as his happy place. I am known as mentorship leadership. I have known of lots of things, but the key message is I am your shining brightly guy. So <laughs> I'm building the brand and I'm building it for myself and the book. All right, next, my reputation. All right, the reputation you have to um, help others, to be a mentor, to be a leader, to be a, a contributor to society and not selfish and also be humble is your reputation. So you have an online reputation, you have an in-person reputation. And if you sat down with a blank piece of paper and say, who am I? And then you compare that to what people think about you. I hope the lists match up <laughs> because often they don't. They mm. often do not match up. So um, I do that regularly to make sure that I'm staying in check and understanding that I am actually the person who I want to be is matching up with the person that people think who I am. So that's another secret. Um, the other thing is, is that what's the likability, right? Is Howard likable? Is the book likable? Okay. And that's really important because we don't buy anything from people or situations that we don't like. If we think that we're being a used car sales by, we are running away and never coming back. And it happens for all brands, including books and including people. You want to associate people that can offer you value. So 
I offer value in a couple different ways, right? I offer a very compelling story. Now, how many times have you picked up a book and read a little and then it collects dust? I don't want my books to collect dust. Most books collect dust. They are really just your calling card. You're launching you. You're a best-selling author for speeches and, and coaching and other things. I actually want people to buy my book. I want them to buy my book. I am being asked to put that in an audio format, which I need to do because people listen to books. So I need to put that a little higher in my priority list this year to make an audio book. So I'm listening to what people are telling me back. Now, what is the thing that you get out of my book? You get lessons learned. You can compare that to your own family story, right? If you know anyone that is dealing with hardship, okay, losing a job, alcoholism, drug addiction, um, it could be trafficking. These are bad stuff. This is really bad stuff. How to talk to your kids, right? Um, health issues, all right? You want to read this book because this book gives you a life guide to how to live a resilient life with hope mm. and being positive self for self-care for others. And then here's my big word, to become a force multiplier for good and community change. If you want any of that stuff, you'll read my book. <laughs> and you don't have to read it all in one sitting. You can pick out a chapter and read it and get something out of it. So what's the compelling story and is there real value? Okay. And that take-home value makes people buy books. You right? said something super key there. What do people get out of it? And that is the number one problem that I see on author websites. They have like, here's my book. Here's where you buy it. Okay, but why? <laughs> so the initials with them, right? W-I-I-F-M. What is in it for me, the buyer of the book? Am I going to spend my hard-earned dollars to spend $29.99 on a hardcover, $23.99 on a, on a paperback, or $9.99 on a Kindle version? It's my value, right? What, what am I offering? And if it's not going to offer me value, why do it? Now, I have to tell you, you learn a few things when you're an author, and you're putting your story out there. Now, Hardly anyone is going to criticize a two-time cancer survivor, but they can. They can say the book is boring. They can say the book is too long. Uh, they can say a lot of things, and they are free to do so. And I need to understand and have, um, they call it rhino skin, to understand that there's not going to, everyone is not going to love the story. They might find a lot issue with it in some way or some kind, and that's okay. If they're putting their money down, that is their choice. Now, Every book out there has got some criticisms. Clearly, clearly. And, and that's okay. So I understood that, but I really, um, I got a lot of help. Writing a book is a team sport. Fighting cancer is a team sport. Improving your community, it's a team sport. I don't know anyone successfully except for golfers and tennis players, and even they have coaches in practice and, and marketing people and financial people around them. Everything in this world is a team sport. So I had amazing publisher that knows how to publish a book. They may not be the greatest at marketing, but boy, they got a good book. And you know what I really needed? Editorial. Editorial. We needed to take those transcripts and refine them. And we had to make content cuts. I have so much content. I, I, books two and three are really ready. So uh, the, the sequels could be coming. Fantastic. And it's great. It's great. So, But it took three years. I hope the next one doesn't take three years. And the other thing is, is that you have to, and I'm moving on to the next thing, amplification. How are you being amplified? You can't do it all yourself. You need help, right? And that becomes part of the team sport. So who is willing to amplify me, my brand, and the book? And there's so many ways, and I'm going to go through some of those with you. But I, I just, it's, um, this is work, right? And I am coming off of, you know, a horrible time in my life. And this is the most positive time in my life. And what is, what makes me happy and get out of bed every day? Yes, feeling good, being three years, no evidence of disease from cancer. Oh my God, blessed, lucky, grateful. Absolutely, right? I am, it is, but I need help. You got to get the word out and it can't just be you, right? I'm not a celebrity, right? I'm not, I'm not a celebrity. I don't have that, you know, I'm not Prince, uh, you know, Prince Harry that's, you know, gets a, you know, a, a $5 million advance on his book and is being interviewed, you know, on CNN. Okay. But I've been on TV, but we'll talk about that. 
<laughs> so this amplification takes so many forms, and I'll go through a bunch of them. And um, but the first letters to know O P N S. Have you heard of that before, Carolyn? You no. have. When I you have when I tell you because I made it up, but you have heard it. <laughs> Other people's networks and stages. Mm. Okay. That's the only way that you can get this amplification, right? And you need to be able to offer them value, okay? Either value somehow by resharing their network, offering their next client to, like, I will offer you your next speaker on your, on your podcast. So you have to be reciprocal and offer some value back before they're willing to do something for you. So... Almost every week, I try to write a column, short column, about my a journey and my experience with my publisher. And he publishes that to over 50,000 people on a weekly e-newsletter for readthespirit.com. Mm. Now, some weeks I don't make the cut, okay? Not my magazine, it's his. And um, some most weeks I do because I'm writing compelling stuff that he wants to include. Now, it might not be the banner and the top line story, but this week, um, I'm in. Why am I in this week? Because I discovered at the uh, January 1st, Amazon made drastic changes to the author pages. And if you haven't looked at your author page, go look at it. They just shut down the ability to share your pictures and your video. Now, they offered some stuff, too. They offered recommendations and three things that you can do. But they do not outweigh the ability to share video and pictures from your author page. I, I, I actually emailed Amazon and they responded. Amazing. I almost kind of got my customer support agent a little angry with me because that was important to me and they took it away. Now, those pictures and those videos are available in foreign countries, but not in the US. What's and let me put market? in, this is one of those examples of why you have to own your platform, that Amazon can change things and that's why you got to have your own website so that you're in control of what information is presented there. Absolutely. And that actually just reminded me. So you, you mentioned that I sold a lot of books in 90 days or 115 days now. I did that through Amazon, but I did it through private sale. You can't rely only on Mr. Amazon or Barnes and Noble or BookBub or uh, all those uh, you know mechanisms to sell your book. You sell books privately, okay, in much larger quantity, okay? So when you actually go and people bring you in to teach, coach, speak, there's three budgets. And again, I'm learning all this. I didn't know this before the summer. They have a uh, typically a, a budget to bring you in as a speaker, coach, or teacher, or, and they have a budget to buy books, and they have a budget for education. Tap all three of those, and you get a better speaking contract coaching contract. Coaching contract. Yeah. So I learned that. And so now I don't, they say, well, your speaker fee is kind of expensive, right? You know, I, I want to charge, you know, $10,500. And they were like, well, what's, what do I get out of it? And I have to tell them. And I said, but I'm willing to discount off my fee if you'll buy 200 books, mm. hard copy, paperback. And you know what? I'll throw in the PDF version if you buy 200 books so they can have it digitally and a physical copy that that I will sign. And I'll talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to make sure that you're pleasing the customer and serving their audience or else they're not going to choose me as their, their, their keynote or their motivational speaker or their coach. So they it's what's in it for them. They're paying. Mm -hmm. I am the servant. I am the I want to make sure that I have a match on as many areas as possible. So they will hire me right now. So that's really important. So my publisher posts that, and I learned a lot about what Amazon took away. I learned what they gave, and I published a piece on that with the marketing director. And mm -hmm. we're teaching people on Read the Spirit this week, and I'm not the first item, I'm the third item. And it's published on LinkedIn, and I'll publish it on Facebook. And I'm helping other authors selflessly. This is my shared experience. If you're an author right now listening or listening to the rebroadcast, go check your author page and go see what they took away. Now, it might have not been important to you if you didn't have any pictures or video on there. But for those who do, no longer disclose to the U.S. audience. And I can't get Amazon to give me a really good reason, except they probably cut jobs mm. and they don't want to moderate that area anymore. Mm. But 
I hope they'll change. I hope they'll bring it back. But but for foreign markets, they're keeping it up. So I need to keep it up and I need to keep opening. So um, I will tell you that the next uh, piece is that getting on other people's stages. Like I'm on your podcast right now and we just met, but I'm going to offer you a reciprocal agreement to come on my podcast, right? And discuss and inform my audience and, and, and listeners and, and, and viewers. And I'm hoping I'm adding value to you and to your audience. And that's really important or else why bother, right? <laughs> so, uh, Amazon Live, LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, awesome ways, rebroadcasts, awesome ways to be able to add value to your audience. And you might invite me back or one of your listeners might contact me to buy a book, to get me to speak, to learn more. Maybe they just want an intro call. Yeah, it gets you in front of her. I have a on to us cancer and I think you might be able to help her. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, you got to be a servant. You got to be available. So the other the other thing is, is that I, this is really cool. And um, anyone can do this. So I went to my cancer hospital and I called the marketing group up. And I said, I want to thank my doctors and my nurses. Would you have me there? Okay. To be able to um, broadcast that. And what do they think they said? Heck they yeah. Said yes. They said <laughs> yes. We never get thanked. All right. Think about that. Go to your church. Go to your kid's school. Go to a museum you like. Go to a restaurant you like. And say, I'm here to say thank you. And I'd like to record it. And then publish it with your permission on social media. So I went to Beaumont Hospital and I thanked my doctors. Guess who showed up? The press. They made it a press event. I got on radio. I got on TV. I got on a, a, a Beaumont took a, brought a photographer, and all I did was say thank you. That's thank how you. rarely doctors get thanked, huh? It's a press event. Well, it, they came. They came and they got interviewed. Now, <laughs> did they get on TV? No. They didn't get on TV. Did they get in the articles published? Yes. Did they get on radio? No, because they only wanted to speak to me. But I thank them, right? And how easy is that to go to a church and say, I want to thank you for your changing people's lives. I want to go to my kid's school because they did something. They did a great community service project. But you got to ask them and say, listen, I want to record this. I want to have someone, you know, taking a video of this. And it can be short. Most of them would say yes. 99% of the time. Okay. You can't get that hundred percent. So that's, that, that. this isn't anything but common sense, but how many people will go do that now? How many people will go thank an organization, a restaurant, go thank, you know, call up an organization and say, I'm coming and I want to record a short piece about thanking you and they'll reshare it for you. So again, this is great stuff. So here's the other thing is that there are now about 158 people mentioned in my book, right? So there's 158 buyers in my book. And then if they just bought one copy for somebody else, I just beat the 250 books that are sold in a lifetime of a book. Just by people that are in my book, they have vested interest to be in my book, right? Now, how many organizations did I mention in my book? A lot. I mentioned Babson College, the number one school for entrepreneurship in the world. Why did I mention Babson College? There's not only a mention, there's a chapter on it because it changed the trajectory of my entire life. I went to a liberal arts school that won't be mentioned. And I went to Babson and it changed the trajectory to become a technology entrepreneur. I became a trustee of the college. I was the uh, chair of the board president of their alumni association that has 44,000 members in 127 countries. So I wrote a chapter about Babson. I went to Babson. I said, Babson, I want to thank you. I thanked you in my book. Let's let our community know about it. They wrote a piece that they published to their network, email, LinkedIn, 82,000 people, 68,000 people on Facebook, right? And a peep, and then some people click the buy button on my book. <laughs> and then I mentioned them in an article. Um, I had my bone marrow transplant on May 24th, 1990, and it's now the 50th anniversary of transplants, but 33 year anniversary. I did an article with Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Why? To celebrate them and thanking them that my life was saved and they wrote an article with me. Well, I happen to mention that I just graduated Babson College. Babson College piggybacked that positive press and then that market that of 82,000 on LinkedIn, 
33,000 emails, 62,000 Facebooks. I got another article in 90 days from Babson College, right? Because it was a positive look. They wanted to be known and associated with Dana-Farber. Why? Because the Pan Mass Challenge starts at Babson College. It's a bike ride race that goes from Dana-Farber to Cape Cod. It started at Babson College. They already know Dana-Farber. They like and trust the brand. It's a worldwide you know, cancer research hospital. Yeah. And they jumped on the bandwagon and rebroadcasted it. Lucky me. Lucky me. It was terrific. Again, yeah, none of that is done without hard work and planning to, to do that. So, yeah. and it's having that mindset of this is mutually beneficial. This is going to give them great press that they want. It's going to get their name out there and it's going to help me and help each other. Like, win, win, win. Win, 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 right? So you don't get many of those in life. So so that's good. So I have to tell you that um, guerrilla marketing, we've all heard of that, right? Guerrilla marketing. So I'm going to show you a postcard, all right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see it come up. It's a little delay on the screen. So you see this postcard? Mm -hmm. It's got all your right. book cover. It's my book cover. And on the back of it, I just flipped it, but it's taking a delay to, to look at it. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about this, with frog it, but there we go. Okay. So it's a picture of me in sunglasses, and it's my bio. And it's a link to my website. I gave out a hundred of these at a cancer conference. Mm -hmm. My market for speaking, it was pharmaceutical, medical device, healthcare. Oh my God. I walked up and I said, who's your marketing PR person? Are you looking for uh, an inspirational speaker that actually has a great story to tell? I've had cancer 30 years apart. You think, I, I think I'd love to motivate and talk to your employees and tell you, why do you work 80 hours a week? Why do you spend billions on solving this jigsaw puzzle called cancer? Actually, 30% called me back. That's mm -hmm. a huge hit rate. Enormous, yeah. enormous hit rate. So I, I went to a conference. And I handed out my, my, my business card, which was a postcard of my book. <laughs> okay. So other people can do this. This isn't a mystery. It just takes work. So I went gorilla. And I hand out postcards. When I leave a tip at a restaurant, I stick a postcard in there. You never know who's going to buy your book. They may hand that to somebody. You may throw it away too. But okay, that's the risk. Printing a thousand postcards cost me fifty dollars. Okay, got to use them. <laughs> you know, so you think about those things. So that's guerrilla marketing. So I want to share something with you that um, my editor had me do. And again, I'm sorry about the the the, the delay on Streamyard. But I have something called discussion guides. Mm. All right. Now you can't see them, but I have discussion guides that you can download from my website and from my publisher's website on survivorship, mentorship, and interfaith, reaching mm. the other. Because that's the work I do in my volunteer role. Okay. Well rounded. Am I a mentor? Yes. Am I an entrepreneur leader? Yes. Am I a cancer survivor? Yes. But I am also an interfaith leader here in Michigan, which we have an immense diversity of Arab population, Christian population, African-Americans, Hindus. We, we, we live in a melting pot. And I decide to participate in that melting pot. These are downloadables, lead magnets, okay, that have anywhere between 16 and 18 lists of things you can take action on. And I leave the final two for you to fill in. <laughs> I want the reader or the person who's in, 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 engaging to fill in your own. OK, it's not about me. It's about you. How are you going to use this list? And I put it out there for people to be an actionable item. It's a call to action. It's not just to be static. But if you just want to read it and uh, you don't want to take action, that's your choice. But the cost for a download of a PDF, nothing. It's a beautiful thing. And it brand is, again, well rounding the brand and all that. Mm -hmm. All right, Carolyn, how many book signings have you been to in the last three years? The last three years, none. <laughs> right, right. The book signing time of sitting at a bookstore, sitting at an event and signing books didn't happen. So what do you do if you people want to sign book? You send them one. They come to your website. You fill out a sticker that has your cover and you can write an inspirational message. Mine is keep shining always. And I, I can write other things. And I sign it and I send them a sticker they can stick on their uh, inside of their book. But in order for them to do that, they need to engage with me. Send me a note of where to mail it. Well, that's awesome. I'm building my list of contacts. 
They come to my website and I'm getting their name and their contact information. Now, I only send them a book plate. I do. You, you, you meet the demand of what they're asking for. You don't want to send them everything else. Send them a book plate. And, and it's cool. It's a cool thing. Now they get a signed book. So these are just some of the things that you can do in order to do that. Now, can you take an extra step? All right. Building, building that and getting out on other forms of media. Okay. I'm on a lot of podcasts, which is great because I have an interesting story and I want to be invited back or I want to add value to their audience. We talked about that, but I got interviewed on TV. So I got called by someone and they had the opportunity to, I have an opening um, to record at my TV program called Go All In. And so I flew to Phoenix in a moment's notice and I recorded in a TV studio. And my book and me went on TV on October 9th in Phoenix at the ABC 15 affiliate. But what happens next? Oh my God, I'm sharing that like crazy. I'm sharing that like crazy. So I've got a little secret to share with everyone, all right? One of the pharmaceutical companies, okay? Okay, it's Merck.com. I'm gonna be featured on Merck.com in a worldwide release of a video and a story by the end of January. Ooh. And you know what, I? it's the same formula. I wanted to thank the doctor that told me to go to the sperm bank when I was told I was going to die in 1989. Mm. That's heavy stuff, but it's emotional stuff. It's heartstring stuff. So people are going to cry when they see this video, but they're also going to be uplifted at the end. And I don't want to leave the end, but it's coming out. It takes real work to be able to be invited by, by, by a pharmaceutical company. you got to sign lots of compliance and legal documents, but I did. So again, I'm doing that to share my story and build my brand. I want people to call me and say, Howard, I want to have a book a call with you to talk about my sick aunt. I want them to book a call with me to talk about my book. I want them to book a call with me to talk about my survivorship coaching program. I want them to talk about my, um, my mastermind program. I want them to ask me to speak on stage. I want them to ask me all those things. Please interact. You can't stay in that, that, that cocoon, right? So I'll, I'll stop there because I know I'm taking a lot of airtime, Carolyn. What else do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, I think the real key to all of this is to think creatively and do a lot of different things. This is something that's been on my mind recently as I'm starting a membership to help people bring more eyeballs to their products and their offers because a lot of people will talk about one aspect of website traffic like you know, do blogging and SEO, okay, or get in front of other people's audiences, borrowed traffic, go on, but it's really good to have something in all these different buckets to make that well-rounded marketing plan. Um, so I've really been thinking a lot about that and how people need to think in a more robust way about different types of marketing and not getting stuck in just doing one thing all the time. I think that you have to have a very diverse marketing plan. You got to try things. Sometimes they don't work. Um, most of my stuff was pretty low cost, right? I don't have the huge budgets. I don't have 250K to put, to put me on the USA Today or the Wall Street Journal yet, yet. But here's the question, you know, you really should ask me is, Howard, why haven't you sold 3,000 books yet? Because <laughs> that's where I'm going. I need to double this year. Mm. At least, at a minimal, if you're, if I'm not back on your show next year in January and saying, Howard, you didn't sell 5,000 books. I'm like, my God, you're right. You're right. The amplification has to meet a goal and it has to have metrics. Mm. So yeah. I gotta, I can't yeah. stop. You got to keep going. And that's what I plan to do. And it's, it's, again, it takes work. It just doesn't come to you. You got to take those two, three, four, five steps towards that to do it. I got to send you information on the selling books with collaborations like event that's happening because I think that's right up your alley. And I'm excited to see that avenue of marketing for book selling as well. It's cool. So I just did one that released the yeah. art, the, the art of uh, connection. And um, mm -hmm. it just released last week. It's got 38 bestseller flags. 
It's got a new a new release flags. There's 365 entrepreneurs. I think it's probably a little less. They each have one page to share their inspiration, wisdom, gratitude, whatever they want to share. I am on page 263. Nice. Okay? And I teach lessons on how to get back up again. And it has all my contact information. And, and September 20th happens to be the date that in 19 and 2019 that I was told that I was cancer free. So it's a deep, meaningful date to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I am in the art of communication. Sorry, it's not clear, but <laughs> you can search it on Amazon. And it's a collaborative book with some real big names. I'm not the big name. There's lots of big names on there. And they're pu pushing that book out. This is their third version. They're going to come out with a fourth version. Now, this mm -hmm. is pay to play. This isn't for free. The way they get this book published is these authors all pay, you know, a reasonable amount of money to be able to do a collaborative. But now you have all these other folks pushing the book. I actually got probably about 100 LinkedIn connections from this book. I was going to say, you also get to meet and network with the other authors. I'm in a couple of multi-author books as well. And I yeah. many of my contacts are these hybrid publishers, which I think is a really cool business model where the author does pay up front, but then they keep the royalties, they keep the control, they get a lot of support and help in producing a beautiful book and getting it up on the platforms, that stuff that they don't know how to do themselves, and that opportunity to connect and network with the other authors. Like, it's a really neat, neat thing. I've realized we had to dial back though, because I was in publishing back in the early 2000s and in the 90s, like really seeing a lot of the vanity presses so we got used to telling authors that if somebody asks them to pay for publishing, that's a scam. Right. But it's not anymore. It's gotten way more complicated. <laughs> oh, so now you got to be even more careful with, with how you're approached and what you're looking at, because hybrid publishers are an absolutely legit way to go. Self-publishing coaches, somebody who helps to guide you in the process of getting published can be can be great but you do still have to watch out for the vanity presses because they're not honest about what it is. It's like, there's nothing wrong with paying so that you have a produced book that you can show your grandmother. Like, that's fine, but that's not what they're telling you. They're telling you it's going to be available in bookstores and you can pay an extra $5,000 for the marketing package, which is just a press release. Like it's, it's yeah. So you got to be careful, buyer beware, check out the resources, ask them for satisfied customers. Um, I have to tell you, my book is not in bookstores. My book is not at the airport. Oh, do I want it to be? It's a very hard process to get in with the the three distributors that actually sell to bookstores and in actually in the airports and all that. Now, mom and pop stores are a little different. You can actually walk into your local mom and pop and say, hey, can I have a book signing here and, and sell a case of book? But most of them want you to give your, sell your book at a, at a big discount so they make the money and you get the publicity. So books and, and bookstores stores work. I mean, they they buy on wholesale and then at retail and they make the profit. Yeah, that's right. But you get notoriety and to have my book at a bookstore would be really cool for the photo op. But it's a it's a money loss. It's a loss leader. But as long as you recognize that, that's OK. That's OK if you can go that route. And so there's it's, it's really about selling and marketing. And is it, as I said, the really most important part was the first part of our conversation, building your brand and reputation and likability, right? And are you offering value? Because it's not about you. It's about the buyer and, 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 and whoever's buying your book. Do they perceive that there is a value? I hope that both people from watching this will go get my book or secondarily reach out to me. Okay. That's great. That's a win for me. This mm -hmm. is a huge win for me. And I love it. And, uh, you know, uh, can we tell a secret, Caroline? Please. Okay. Caroline is so booked out. I was supposed to be on her show May 1st, but she <laughs> called me and said I had a cancellation on Martin Luther King Day. All right. Someone else canceled. Howard Brown wins. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I, I, I say yes and take the step. And I learned that from a, a really good coach. <laughs> And I was so grateful that I knew somebody who was going to be willing to jump in there because I was like, I can't have an empty spot. What am I going to do? I know Howard's going to say yes to this. You, 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 you had you had me at, at hello, and I wanted to do it. And why wait until May? 
let's go today. Now this thing's going to be sent over my network, my publisher's network and your networks. And we're going to try to, yeah, people are going to get value from this show. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your secrets and behind the scenes of what you've been doing. I think it's easy to look at somebody's big headline of, oh, I sold all of these books in this short period of time. How am I to actually dig in and go, oh, actually, that was a lot of work and creative out of the box thinking. And it wasn't like some kind of a magic wand. No, not at all. I don't have a magic wand. But is there anything that I we discussed today that someone can't go do? No, they can go do it. I think that the new one is the go say thank you to your church, school, restaurant. That one's a little bit new, but um, idea. It I don't want to share. I, I don't mind sharing it. I don't have the I don't have the market on thanking people. <laughs> I want people to go do that. It's beautiful. I just put out a clip about um, press releases for books, and a lot of authors misunderstand the purpose of the press release, and they just the story is I published a book, but that's not what a press release does because that's not new like people publish books all the time that's not the story so you have to find what is the newsworthy story and so you've done that with the giving back and thanking and showing gratitude and showing up in person to to give gratitude that's a story i uh, you're absolutely 100 percent on that and so my, my press i had a press release that announced the book but um who reads press releases? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. So again, I'm not the market for press releases, but um, <laughs> it's it's important to be packaged up correctly. And so, you know, for example, when I have to introduce myself to see if I'm the right fit as a speaker, okay, I have a package. I have a one-page sheet that says this is who Howard Brown is, and this is who you get, and this is what he does. I have a introductory hype reel so you can see kind of the markets that I'm, uh, you know, I offer my expertise and my credibility. And then I have a sample of how I speak. I have a short sample of a minute and a half, two minutes called a sizzle reel. And I have a nine minute version of me on stage that you can get a real feel for my story. Even if I'm going to change the story for your audience, you know, you got to give someone their menu so they can just see if they want to actually buy and pay. And so you've got to have all that in place and that takes work and that takes some money to do, but it builds the brand. You, you have to be able to offer someone value and it's fun. I'm having a blast. You can't tell if I'm having a blast, right? I'm having a great time because I, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the most important message of the day. Caroline is one, there's two messages. One, go do it now. There's no reason to wait. That's the first message. The second message is go get your healthcare checks, mammogram, prostate check, colonoscopy, um, uh, your cardio test, your, 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 your once a year physical, because I got to tell you, I do not want anyone. And I know I can't stop this from getting colon cancer, colon cancer, but if you have an earlier screening, they can snip that pilot and you can go on with your life and go see them in three or five years. I didn't have that luxury. I didn't get screened when I was 40 or 42. I got screened at 50. The new age is 45. I didn't have any family history or symptoms when you can get screened earlier. And I woke up from my colonoscopy and I had stage three cancer and it's, it brought my life to a screeching halt. That so brutal. go get screened, go get screened. So those are the two messages. Go do it now. You can do what I did very easily and you can go get screened. <laughs> Let's leave with that. Perfect. Thank you again. This is wonderful. And it's always a delight to spend time with you, Howard. Thank you. And I'm going to say, if you want to shine brightly with me, go to shiningbrightly.com. Come contact me. I welcome it. Let's shine brightly together. All right. Excellent.